All right, folks, I believe we are live. So uh, hopefully there's a few uh, new people on board. Um, you're going to want to hit your share buttons uh, right away, I would think, um, get going on things. So, uh, yeah, I'm just going to wait till the numbers start to climb. I'm a little bit on a delay here. So uh, once you're there, uh, let let me know. Let me know you can see and hear me okay. And... Um, I'm looking forward to uh, getting going. So uh, hopefully uh, people are online. I'm still showing. Uh, oh, there we go. Uh, my numbers are jumping. So uh, good, good stuff. Um, I want to get uh, right to it. So um, yeah, I'm, I'm hoping that uh, that people will uh, come on board and uh, get talking about things. And um, yeah, we want to we want to get going. Uh, as soon as I can. So uh, I'm just uh, looking at my notes here. Um, and I just uh, screwed something up. <laughs> so um, I'm just typing this uh, show note in here. I'm glad to see some uh, people getting on board. I've got a lot of important things to talk about. But uh, first and foremost, folks, um, thank you to everybody out there. My Hard Gainer Solution online course based on the number one best-selling book. Um, huge launch. Huge, huge launch. So uh, thanks to everybody involved with that. Um, of course, Dr. Mike, Magic Mike. Uh, of course, Andy. Sinclair, my protege, uh, all you people who have uh, invested in my products as usual, uh, thank you for that. Um, yeah, very, very good, uh, huge uh, online launch um, based on the best-selling book. So I hope it'll help people out uh, immensely. And I'm just waiting for the numbers to climb. I want to get at an important conversation. Um, I'm going to share a document with you. I'm going to read through it. And I'm not reading through it pretending like you're in kindergarten. I'm reading through it because a lot of people tend to gloss over things. And um, as an academic, I want to uh, make sure that I focus people on the elements of something that are really important so you don't just gloss over it. So we are going to talk about uh, vitamins, vitamin supplements, other supplements, um, who's on your side, who's not on your side. Uh, all those kind of things, what supplements can do, what they can't do. Um, and hopefully uh, you're going to learn something here. Unfortunately, at the 11th hour last night, I got another bogus uh, a link to some really bogus, disturbing stuff about keto nonsense and why you need certain supplements that they just happen to sell to help you through. <laughs> There's even something as ridiculous as known as the keto flu. Um, if your body is experiencing flu-like symptoms because of a diet you're on, that's biofeedback telling you your body doesn't like what you're doing. But no, of course, the idiots in this industry have to twist that into being something good. Oh, you're metabolic. Uh, your, your body's balancing out. It's figuring things out. Bull crap. Anyway, that was too late for me to get this uh, that piece of research on board. And I don't like bringing research that shouldn't get attention. I don't like giving it attention because it just fuels to the fire. So uh, lots of people getting on board. Uh, hopefully um, got some new people. And uh, by all means, hit your share button, folks. This is something you're going to want people to uh, see and know and experience. And uh, we really, um, you know, we really need to start. Um, exposing this stuff. So here's the link. I'm just giving you the link right now. Um, we'll put that up there. It's a long link. If you want to copy and paste it later, that's fine, but I'll leave it there for now until I uh, start doing, um, you know, some, some other highlights. So uh, numbers are good. So uh, let's get to it. Um, I usually don't do like uh, investigative journalism, but this article is well-based in in terms of academic uh, research and references, as you'll see, uh, referencing proper studies, referencing good studies, uh, referencing the right kind of studies. Um, so this investigative journalist actually uh, did their homework on this one. And uh, so I'm going to use it uh, to get to go. Everybody's saying their hellos and this and that. And uh, I just uh, want to get uh, right into it. Uh, so there's the link for later on. And uh, we can just um, hide that for now. And then I will uh, start 
bringing uh, this into the conversation. Um, hopefully you guys uh, can see what I'm doing here. And uh, I'm just going to start with, I don't know if you can read all of that. So I will just uh, do this. Oh, wrong way. So um, hopefully you can see that because it's an internet article, uh, I can't really um, raise um, the font on this at all. So uh, hopefully um, you guys will be able to uh, read that and read along with me. Uh, let me know if you can or you can't, um, and then we'll get into it. So a bit of a long article, but necessary to introduce the preamble. $37 billion supplement industry, largely unregulated. That was always a big uh, bugaboo with me. Um, some supplements, a category uh, that includes vitamins and herbs, uh, can actually be dangerous and have been linked uh, with ER visits and death, uh, which we're going to get to. FDA currently recalling supplements found to be contaminated with banned drugs and bacteria. Uh, I can tell you all about uh, being someone involved in the supplement industry way back when um, about the banned drugs that are found in supplements. That's how you get a supplement off the ground. You spike it with things like oral steroids, or if it's a fat burner, you spike it with stimulants. Um, and then you convince the consumer you've got a product that works because uh, the actual drug that that is in the product isn't even found on the ingredient level. So uh, I'm going to explain all that to you. Um, new supplement companies uh, like Gwyneth Paltrow's Goop continue to advertise their products as healthy despite potential side effects. And some say they target vulnerable consumers, particularly on uh, which you wouldn't might find ironic is the most vulnerable consumers out there uh, seem to be affluent uh, middle-aged women um, who want to do something about their bodies. You are targets for this industry. So uh, let's keep that in mind. Folks, hit your share buttons. Uh, I can't see shares or emoticons or anything with the software that I'm using. So um, by all means, uh, you know, you'll want to share this. So let me get to the heart of the article. And there's a couple charts here you're going to want to see. Um, hopefully you can see the print. Um, I only get a small box to look at. So um, I hopefully you can see because because this is on the Internet, I can't raise the font on this one like I do uh, on my Word documents. So let's get to the uh, journalistic part of it, sort of an intro, and then I'll, uh, we'll get to some really important charts that you need to see. Throw your comments uh, up there. Uh, let me know you can read this. Um, so uh, Puya Yamshidi, a resident, a medical resident at Wheel Cornell Medical College, delivered his first baby. The doctor on call uh, thanks, Blythe. The doctor on call told him to take the newborn away from its mother. The baby, who was a healthy girl with mocha pink skin and a powerful set of lungs, was being quarantined. In the middle of her pregnancy, the mother had come down with tubercul <laughs> tuberculosis. Uh, she contracted the contagious lung infection in her teens, and the illness came back despite preventative antibiotics and regular screenings. The cause was a popular herbal supplement called St. John's Wort. St. John's Wort, oh, don't even get me started, but uh, yeah, uh, I'll, we'll get into this as we go along. So uh, another scam out there that helps with your depression when, no, it doesn't, but we'll get to that. Um, the, and here's a quote from the doctor. The trouble is most people don't consider this kind of stuff a medication because you don't need a prescription for it. And so she didn't tell us about it. Yamshidi told the Business Insider. St. John's Ward is one of the most popular herbal supplements sold in the United States. But in the year 2000, the National Institute of Health, very respected, published a study showing that St. John's work could severely curb the effectiveness of several important pharmaceutical drugs, including antibiotics, including birth control, and antiretrovirals uh, for infections like HIV by speeding up their breakdown and uh, metabolism in the body. It's basically over-metabolized the antibiotics so they weren't in her system in the right doses, Yamshidi said. The findings on St. John's wort prompted the U.S. Food and Drug Administration to warn doctors about this herbal remedy, but that did little to stem public sale or consumption of it. Uh, over the past 
two decades, U.S. poison control centers have gotten about 275,000 reports, roughly one every 24 minutes of people who reacted badly to supplements. A third of them were about herbal remedies, just like St. John's wort. So I'm going to pause right there, folks, and start giving you the skinny. One of my favorite sayings is, a lie goes around the world before the truth can even lace up its shoes. This is how the supplement industry works. They get you to buy into something with anecdotal evidence and ridiculous nonsense. Some of that anecdotal evidence is actually from the product manufacturer posing as someone else, posing as a consumer and saying, oh, this did this for me and this did that for me. And it's total bull crap. All right. So um, the FDA overdosing on a natural supplement. The FDA defines supplements as products, quote, intended to add further nutritional value to supplement the diet. These aren't regulated as drugs. Only when a supplement is shown to cause significant harm is it called out as unsafe. So that leads a real wide variation for criminal activity. Uh, criminal activity, the kind of wolves in sheep's clothing, the kind that are shaking your hand uh, on, the one, on the one side and with their other hand, they got it halfway up your butt, um, you know, just sort of reaming you royally. So... Um, you can sort of tell my take on the supplement industry where I'm going with this. So uh, half of all participants in a survey in the mid 2000s said they took at least one supplement every day, almost the same percentage of Americans who took them two decades ago. But research has consistently found pills and powders to be ineffective and sometimes dangerous. Actual research, these products ineffective and sometimes dangerous. OK, um, Maybe I should have highlighted that and put it on the screen, but I will. Uh, quote, consumers should expect nothing from supplements because we don't have any clear evidence that they're beneficial and they should be leery that, leery that they could be putting themselves at risk. And that's from uh, Bryn Austin, a professor of behavioral sciences at Harvard T.H. Chan School of Public Health. Whether it's on the bottle or not, um, there can be ingredients in there that can do harm. And I have a lot of insight on that. So despite many such warnings, uh, the supplement industry's market is as much as 37 billion this year, according to one estimate. There, that just means to me there's a sucker born every minute. Ads for supplements can be found on internet pop-up windows, social media, magazine pages, and on TV, sold in corner health food stores, pharmacies, big grocery conglomerates. I know when I do my weekly grocery shopping at Walmart, I walk by the supplement aisle and I see all these people standing there looking at labels and reading ingredients and I just shake my head if they only knew. Um, most supplements do not come with explicit instructions on how much to take, only a suggested dose. Uh, or potential uh, drug interactions. Yamshidi's patient had no idea she was putting her life or the life of her baby at risk uh, by taking uh, St. John's wort. So um, she was not alone. Listen to this. Using data from 2004 to 2013, this is the kind of stuff, the kind of research that matters. Meta-analysis over a long period of time. 2004 to 2013, Authors of a 2016 study published in the New England Journal of Medicine, only one of the most respected journals out there when it comes to truth and look and search for truth, estimated that 23,005 emergency room visits a year are linked to supplements. Between the year 2000 and 2012, the annual rate of negative reactions to supplements or exposures as they're known in scientific parlance rose from 3.5 um, to 9.3 cases per 100,000 people, a 166% increase. That's just the people that end up in the emergency rooms, folks. Some people just think they have a cold, they have a flu, they'll ride it out. They're not feeling that great. Trust me, uh, these numbers uh, are skewed on the low end. So uh, over that period, 34 people died as a result of using supplements, uh, according to, I'm going to copy that, uh, according to, well, I guess I can't copy that. It's not, oh, there we go. Um, I'm going to put that on the screen there. Uh, uh, uh. All right. 34 people died as a result of using supplements, according to a 2017 study published in the Journal of Medical Toxicology. 
folks, to be a good researcher, you have to be a well-rounded researcher, like this article is, like I consider myself to be. It was amazing to me the amount of attacks I got when I talked about the nonsense of keto a couple of weeks ago of people who have a very narrow, myopic view of what research even is, and they don't understand things like meta-analysis and long-term studies and what a preponderance of the evidence shows. Six of these deaths resulted from ephedra, the once popular weight loss supplement banned by the FDA in 2004. I had several clients back in the day who were competitors who had heart attacks and heart issues who ended up in emergency rooms with six pack abs uh, from abusing ephedra, especially women. They used to call um, phantom meal uh, it was labeled phantom meal by female competitors in figure. Um, one of their meals was a large Starbucks bold blend with like a handful of ephedra tablets or ephedra they didn't want to drink when they went out because they were competing. So on a Friday, Saturday night when they're out at the clubs, they would take a handful of ephedra with ecstasy and a coffee and, um, you know, oh yeah, my heartbeat, I'd get a little bit of arrhythmia, but it was no big deal. Well, it is a big deal. So uh, you have to uh, watch out for these kind of things. So um, uh, another three people died from homeopathic uh, remedies. Don't get me started on homeopathy. It's also ridiculous. Um, so you got to watch out uh, for that as well. Um, and I'll do, a, I'll do something separate on homeopathy at, at another time. So uh, very important as well. So um, Certain formulations uh, of it can be prescribed to treat uh, Yohim B, this, this is, to uh, treat uh, erectile dysfunction. And I used to have lots of male clients uh, abusing that as well. So uh, important stuff. Um, the quote, next quote, you don't know what you're dealing with. I'm going to get to a very important chart here in a second. So hang with me. Guys, if you're out there and you're listening, by all means, hit your share button and hit your emoticons or uh, throw me some comments so I know I'm not talking to myself. Um, but we're now we're going to get into the meat and potatoes of this. Um, Yamshidi said he knew many people who took a daily multivitamin and tried herbal formulations now and again uh, when they were feeling tired or unwell, but they, and uh, he always withheld judgment. But he remembers the moment he became wary of supplements when that pregnant woman, his team were monitoring, began coughing up phlegm. She had been incredibly cooperative, patient, super engaged, and always showing up on time for her visits, taking all our instructions carefully. Just a really good patient. Uh, when Yamshidi and his team realized their patient's tuberculosis was back, uh, they asked if she started any immunic any new medication? She said no, uh, but the next day she arrived at the clinic with a small bottle of St. John's Wort. This happens all the time. Take our magic supplement and it will make you feel better. Now, let's look at, here's the chart. Hopefully you guys can see all this. Supplements you should and shouldn't take. Let's go to the avoid list first on your right, okay? on um, Avoid. Ginseng, ginkgo biloba, multivitamins, avoid multivitamins. I can get into that if you want me to. I did a whole thing on that in my 2010 workshop um, that it's not just about contents of our food, but it's about retention, assimilation, uh, um, metabolism, uh, and um, digestion of these nutrients. Often they compete with each other. Often they have a add additive effect with each other. So avoid right there, multivitamins, avoid right there, probiotics, avoid right there, fish oils, avoid right there, vitamin C. Okay, the most common ones out there on, on the avoid list. Listen, in 2014, I wrote an article called There's Something Fishy About Fish Oil uh, on my blog when I was still blogging and stuff. I had Mike take that down because of the blowback I got, not because I was wrong, but because I couldn't be bothered trying to educate ignorant people who want to and need to believe in supplements. Just like I explained on that keto post uh, quote card I did a couple of weeks ago, people that want to and need to believe in magic diets, no matter what short-term research says, long-term research will always catch up. I remember Udo's oil and all these things that were popular making my head spin in the late 90s and early 2000s, fish oil, fish oil, fish oil, and the benefits of, of these, uh, you know, um, DHA and all the components of fish oil. And look what it's come to under supplements to avoid. Fish oil, 
probiotics, vitamin C. Um, I'll, Michelle, good, good point on the folic acid. I'm going to get there uh, in, in a second. I want to just um, focus on this. Now, look at this. I wish I could highlight this. May be laced with undeclared in, ingredients or unapproved drugs. Antioxidants, vitamin E, workout boosters. Now, I have background insider information on this. Man, some of you know, some of you don't know, but I was um, in a supplement uh, company. I was endorsed by many companies because I used to diet their before and after people for uh, magazine articles. I would diet and train them into transformation, and then the supplement companies would take credit for it with their magic supplements. Workout boosters are the most commonly known um, for for being um, laced, all right, as this says, with undeclared ingredients. Here's the thing. When I was with one of the biggest supplement companies out there, I got a phone call one day from the people who manufacture their products. And they said, Scott, we see you in the magazines and this and that. Have you ever thought of, uh, you know, creating your own supplement line? You got a big name. You could make a lot of money. We could actually just use the runoff of their product and start small and it wouldn't cost you that much. Um, you know, you could put your own label on it. It would be the exact same product. And then he says to me, nudge, nudge, wink, wink. If you wanted to send us some proprietary blend powder to throw into some of your mixes, we have no problem with that. Now that is sort of um, plausible deniability of saying, hey, if you send us some powder, we don't test what's in it. Uh, we'll throw it into your product. And what happened is back in the day, and I know this for a fact because I know people who did it, what they would do for things like creatine, they would order oral steroids um, um, postally from China and dump it in the first couple batches of their creatine product so that people would see instant gains. And then they'd be committed consumers to that product uh, when they finally uh, took the um, – the laced uh, testosterone, oral testosterone, very toxic on the liver because they would always buy the cheapest one, uh, and they would take that out. And so they did the same thing uh, with fat burners as well. They would lace them with stimulants, uh, clenbuterol powder, other kinds of uh, adrenalized powder so that people would actually feel something. Um, but, of course, this is never on the approved list. So of the products that you should avoid because they may be laced with undeclared ingredients or unapproved drugs, workout boosters probably rank number one. And then linked to serious illness or death, weight loss formulations. Because if a little works, then more is better. And they're usually laced with unapproved drugs as well. So um, that should produce a few of those emoticons with the shock face. Um, now on the left side, supplements to take. I'm not totally in agreement with these ones. Vitamin D, for instance, the most recent round of studies are showing now people are suffering vitamin D toxicity from taking uh, too much uh, vitamin D. And the studies are now coming in in groves that um, may not be necessary because if you're having fortified and rich products, you're going to get more than enough um, well, Nancy, Nancy just says, can I say more about probiotics? Well, it's right there, Nancy, on what to avoid. This, is, this chart is a summation of the research in the last 10, 15 years. Avoid probiotics. Why do I need to get into it? It's right there in black and white, and it's right there as a conclusion. All right? So it's not, it's not something that we should be up for debate. Vitamin C, probiotics, fish oil, don't bother. Um, so anyway, now uh, take for your specific needs. Creatine. Yes, creatine works. I have noticed, though, in women that creatine uh, also causes a lot of water retention and leads to digestive issues, um, in, in, uh, especially in women as well, mostly because cheap creatine is um, really hard to digest and your body lets you know that. However, keep in mind, if you're doing a new product creatine because it's cheap, then you're likely to get something that could be laced uh, with some kind of anabolic steroid, uh, oral anabolic steroids, which tend to be hardest on the liver. So, um, yeah, Perry's just saying uh, in terms of vitamin D, specific blood tests to determine if it's required as a supplement. And if so, it requires pharmaceutical grade, not nutraceutical. Amen to that. So I would say <laughs> when in doubt, don't take it. Whereas most consumers out there, when in doubt, they take it. 
So, and you're doing more harm than good. Folic acid, uh, where's my uh, comment there on folic acid? Um, uh, oh, there it is. Michelle's just saying folic acid is an avoid for me as I'm compound uh, heterogeneous for MTHFR. Uh, I take fol folate instead. Yeah, that seems to be the common common view right now. Folic acid, folate, same idea. Um, and you know what? It may de decrease rates of serious burst effects when taken before during pregnancy. I don't think uh, it's necessary other than that. Uh, again, and then zinc. Um, I think this is uh, something that the research is unclear on, and I would myself, I just think it's it's a non-factor, and I would say avoid it. But look at the research that went into this chart, okay? You see this little line here that says sources, folks? Can you see that? Stop, I'm just moving my cursor over it. All right, New England Journal of Medicine, Journal of the American Medical Association, um, Public Library of Science and Medicine, National Institute of Health, the U.S. FDA, the Mayo Clinic, the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition, and the Cochrane uh, Systematic Review, and Harvard Health Beat. Now, the Cochrane Systematic Review is probably the most uh, respected periodical out there. So very, very important. So uh, let's get back to the St. John's Wart uh, kind of thing. Uh, but hopefully that chart uh, opened a few eyes out there. So um, so the, the lady here had been taking the herbal remedy for feelings of depression she experienced after her last pregnancy, uh, you know, postpartum depression. And boy, do the supplement markers love targeting on actual uh, physical ailments that, you know, like postpartum depression. If they can tell you they can treat that with a supplement, they don't have to prove that in the supplement industry. They can just say it. So they sell the sizzle, not the steak. Remember that. So, and here's what the research actually did. So, uh, although some small studies su initially suggested St. John's work could have benefits for people with dep depressive symptoms, um, you know, the NIH, National Institute of Health Researchers, um, again, uh, failed to find enough uh, evidence to support that claim. I'm just gonna put that up here because that's very important as well. So we can see a lot of these herbal stuff is nonsense. I'm going to get to that below when we talk about goop uh, and, and this other stuff. So uh, very, very important stuff to know and uh, work with. So, um, oh, for some reason, there we go. Uh, Yashidi's patient had to be isolated to ensure the, that her infection didn't spread. And she spent the last three months of her pregnancy alone. And it was miserable. She was isolated for all that time and she couldn't even hold her own baby. Um, in the in in his opinion, let me just get rid of that. Uh, many people end up in emergency rooms after taking supplements. Is that the quantities of active ingredients in them can vary dramatically? A 2013 study uh, published in the Journal of BMC Medicine found that dosages of ingredients and in supplements could even vary from pill to pill. <coughs> which poses a significant hurdle for doctors trying to treat a negative reaction. I know something about that as well. <clears throat> Legally, as long as they have 10% of their suggest su suggested active ingredient in a product, then they can market it as having that ingredient. So, um, you know, a lot of times they'll try to cut costs uh, by just keeping their active ingredient way lower than they say uh, is on the label. So again, you're reading a label thinking you're getting accurate information, but in a non-regulated industry, you're getting whatever they want to tell you. Um, and you're just assuming that someone is fact checking this stuff when they're not. <clears throat> so that's very, very important. Uh, there are other medications that can have side effects, but patients come in and tell you the dose and you can, <clears throat> reverse it with medication, <clears throat> but with supplements, you don't even know what you're dealing with. And that's true. Uh, you might take one variant of a supplement that has 100% of what you think it does. And then the next time you take your daily dose of that, it has 0%. So <clears throat> it's all over the place and that creates havoc inside your body. So let's talk a little vitamin history because a lot of the things I do is I study nutritional history and there's hints. Um, here and advantages by doing that. So again, folks, hit your share buttons. Uh, I don't know if you're doing that or not, but uh, we want people on board. We want people learning just how deep the scam goes in the fitness and diet industry to trying to twist you out of your money. 
So um, by isolating the first vitamin in 1912, uh, Polish uh, chemist Funk unwittingly unleashed a frenzy among chemists to create or synthesize vitamins in the lab. Between 1929 and 43, 10 Nobel Prizes were awarded for work in vitamin research. By the mid-1950s, scientists had synthesized 12 of 13 essential vitamins. Of course, this is important for our, for our understanding of modern nutrition. These were added to foods like bread, cereal, and milk, which were then sold as being fortified. Foods that lost nutrients uh, during processing got these vitamins back uh, in and were labeled enriched. So that's what fortified means. That's what enriched means. When supplements were introduced in the 1930s and 40s, they were presented as a way to address nutrient deficiencies that cause illnesses like rickets and scurvy. They were also seen as a way to avoid expensive and difficult to access medical treatment. Now, I'm going to pause here because this is something you need to know. When vitamins were first discovered, the reason that there was Nobel Prizes awarded is because we had health crisis on our hands back then because of malnutrition, okay? We don't have malnutrition in the modern area. We have overnutrition in the modern area and modern era. This is a whole different ball game. Back there, scurvy and rickets. That would affect young kids and stunt their growth and things like that. So the discovery of vitamins and how we could get them into the food supply was really, really important. But all these years later, we don't have malnutrition in a world of food abundance. We have overnutrition, an oversupply of nutrients. All right. So this is very, very important. So now in recent years, a new generation of supplements has emerged targeting, all right, a new generation targeting primary, primarily middle class and affluent women. And why does it do that? Let me just post this up here. All right. Boom. All right. Now, why? Why does the modern uh, supplement world target, specifically target, middle class affluent women? One, they can afford to buy the crap, all right? So they, they're affluent. They have disposable income. Why not target people with disposable income? Two, they're the ones most worried about things they can afford to worry about, like being body conscious, body image conscious, things like that. So they target these people specifically as consumers with disposable income to waste and spend, so why not profit from them, all right? So this is very, very important stuff. Middle class affluent women are the targets of the diet and health food supplement vitamin industry and fitness industry. And you need to get that through your heads. OK, you're a target, right? They're not trying to help you. They're trying to make money from you. These formulas ooze with the lifestyle trends of 2017. Minimalism, everything you need and nothing that you don't. Bright colors, clean eating, another buzzword and personalization, for instance. And here we go with the hit list. The actress Gwyneth Paltrow's new lineup, $90 uh, monthly vitamin packs released through her controversial wellness company, Goop, have appealing names why, like why am I so effing tired and high school jeans. Don't you see the provocation in that, folks? Don't you see the titillation in that? You're already going to go, huh, what? What's that called? What's this about? Um, especially, and look at look at the name. Why am I so effing tired in high school jeans? Who are titles like that likely to appeal to? Middle class affluent women with disposable income. And now these um, items they claim to deliver health benefits like energy boosts and metabolism jump starts. What is different about Goop offers in, in, is the combinations that the protocols put together were done by doctors on the Goop's team, Alejandro Hunger, a cardiologist who helped design several of Goop's multivitamin packs, told Business Insider. Where have we heard that before, folks? If you've been around with me for a long time, what was my first lecture on low-carb lies and the politics for profits, right? Oh, well, it was designed by doctors. Dr. Atkins, to follow his nonsense low-carb diet, you need to take 60 vitamins to do it right under Dr. Dr. Atkins' advice because he's a doctor. Mind you, he, rep uh, he also recommended fried pork rinds in the snack aisle section as being better than uh, whole, fruits, so whole fruits and vegetables. So if you look at the ingredients in why am I so effing tired, which Younger helped design, this suggests the formula is not based on rigorous science. 
all right, not based on rigorous science. The vitamin packets include 12.5 milligrams of B6, 960% of the recommended daily allowance, although on, on Goop's label it is listed as 625%. And ingredients like rosemary extract and Chinese yam whose effects have never been studied in humans for which there's no standard daily allowance. And then look in their nonsense marketing that I can't, I can't blow up for you, but we built our brand by turning to the best doctors and experts in the field for advice and solutions. So now we've partnered with these practitioners and delivered a health-defining vitamin and supplement regimens that address the acute needs of modern women. So they come right out and tell you that they're targeting you as a modern woman. They want your money. Um, the unfortunate thing is they're, they're not using um, the best doctors and experts in the field. They're signing up anyone who wants to be on board to make a buck who has a doctor beside their name. That's how this works. Okay, that's why Dr. Atkins uh, worked so well, right? Because uh, it had doctor beside his name, even though 90% of what he advocated was nonsense. And remember, in that lecture, I told you Dr. Atkins never produced one single published scientific paper on his so-called diet, not one. So again, if you're just going to read ad copy and think it's science and think you can trust what you're reading in an unregulated industry, then you know, I got some land to sell you uh, in Florida right now. So uh, according to the Mayo Clinic, vitamin D B6 is, like, is likely safe in the recommended daily amount, 1.3 milligrams for people ages 19 to 50. But taking too much of the B6 has been linked with abnormal heart rhythms, decreased muscle tone, and worsened asthma. High doses of B6 can also cause drops in blood pressure. The Mayo Clinic notes can interact with drugs like Advil, Motrin, and those prescribed for anxiety and Alzheimer's. So if you, if you have really bad PMS uh, symptoms and you take Motrin or Advil for that, or some, some with associated ingredients, and then you're taking Goop, you can actually worsen your PMS uh, symptoms uh, and not get any alleviation from them. So the whole argument that they're creating supplement regimens that address the acute needs of modern women, that's already defeated by how much B6 they have in this goop, which is nonsense because uh, right there, that's not addressing the needs of the modern woman, is it? It's just saying they are, because again, we're on your side. You know, we want to help you with your nutritional needs. We don't have nutritional needs, folks, in this era. We're over, okay? We have overnutrition, not malnutrition. Um, here's the quote. People using any medication should check the package insert and speak with a qualified health professional, including a pharmacist, about possible interactions, the Mayo Clinic says. Uh, younger declined to comment on the specific ingredients, of course, um, but said many of them were added to address the most common nutrient mineral deficiencies of today, B, C, D, and E, iodine, magnesium, uh, molybdenum, among others. Well, we just showed you in the supplements not to take, none of these things are deficient in the modern diet. None of them are deficient. So you can just say that, you can go on TV and say that, and that's a sound bite, and then, oh, wow, well, I must need a supplement. Well, no, you don't. And uh, if you remember my lecture from last week, I talked all about, uh, you know, uh, Dr. Herbert, who the most respect, the most important and relevant nutritionist of modern time, and why you'd never heard of him is because he lit up exposing people like this. So I'm going to take the baton and do it for him because uh, uh, he died way back in 2002. Other shiny new pills and powders that have materialized uh, in recent months include one called Ritual, um, comes to your doorstep, the future of vitamins is clear. Again, all about ad copy, right? A month's supply of this filled with tiny white beads suspended in oil costs 30 bucks, but the pills don't differ much more than your standard cheaper multivitamin. Uh, they have similar amounts of magnesium, vitamin K, folate, B12, iron, boron, vitamin E, and vitamin D. Uh, vitamin, vitamin E, another new supplement manufacturer, ships personalized daily packets. You know, that's the world we live in now. So cater to the modern internet where everything's personalized. And then, and then their products have names like Good Hair Day and Bridal Boost in a box, resembling a tea bag dispenser for 40 bucks. So here again, let's titillate, all right, the modern affluent woman. And what kind of names do we create? Good Hair Day and Bridal Boost to do that. And remember, Similar amounts 
of um, the B vitamins. And just remember, if you're taking a multivitamin that has more than 100%, right, super multi-day vitamin, and you're doing that every day, then you're probably building up toxic levels of things in your body you don't need. And at worst, you're just creating uh, more nu nutrient-dense, expensive urine because your body can't store the water-soluble vitamins anyway. So uh, very, very uh, important stuff. So, um, And again, just more about the ad copy nonsense. And then when vitamins can't save us from ourselves, no matter how colorful their packaging or messaging, all these supplements fall prey to the same problem. We simply don't need them to be healthy. All right, I'm going to post that up here because that is important. So let me just uh, copy that and paste that. Folks, are you hitting your share button and getting people on board here, especially you ladies out there? All these supplements fall prey to the same problem. We simply don't need them to be healthy. This is an investigative journalist article that talks to all the right top researchers in the field, folks. I mean, and then, and then here comes the yeah buts, right? All the people who invest money, they don't want to think they've been scammed, so they go into defense mode. Yeah, but I need it for this. Yeah, but I'm a special, I'm a special victim unit. Yeah, but this applies to me for this. No, it doesn't, okay? Let me read that again. All these supplements fall prey to the same problem. We simply do not need them to be healthy. Look, folks, let me pause here and tell you something, okay? Can I tell you this? Four decades in the fitness industry. Two of those decades being endorsed and paid by two of the top supplement companies in the fitness industry. If supplements added any benefit to you, my clients at all, do you not think I would have invested in being part of the supplement industry in order to help people I've devoted my career to helping and make millions doing it? Like I said, I got a call that I could have started my own supplement line because I was in all the magazines. These guys were behind me. They'd do it for me on the cheap to help get me going. And I had a magazine soapbox at the time that I could have got on to sell it. And I said no, because I didn't want to scam people. Don't you think someone like me who does good research, who does right research, who knows the difference between real research and incidental research, don't you think that if supplements of any kind, herbal remedies or not, offered any kind of benefit to you that I'd be all over that and by now I would have been retired? It's nonsense. So all these supplements fall prey to the same problem. We simply do not need them to be healthy. And it doesn't matter how many times I say that you're going to be drowned out by the message of wishbone over backbone, where you're just going to want to wish for something in a bottle. I once had a client, former client, after they were with me, start selling a product online in a bottle called Fitness in a Bottle. I couldn't believe it. It was shocked. And they made money. And then last night, like I said, it was the 11th hour and I couldn't produce the link. Maybe someone can send the link. I don't like exposing uh, scam artists, but this was all about supplements specifically designed for the keto diet that you need to take because of what the keto diet is missing. It just complete and utter nonsense, folks. But I don't get why this is so hard for people to actually understand. So um, let me get back to the article here. We use vitamins as insurance policies against whatever else we might or might not be eating as if atoning for our other nutritional sins, vitamins can save us from ourselves. Catherine Price, a science reporter, writes in the book uh, Vitamania. Then maybe you should read Vitamania uh, as well. So uh, it's a pretty good read. Um, a large recent review published in the Annals of Internal Medicine looked at 27 trials of vitamins involving over more than 400,000 people. This is what real research does, folks. Not short-term studies in a college program that takes place over 12 weeks, all right? This is what real research looks like. Annals of Internal Medicine, a very, very important uh, journal, well-respected, 400,000 people. The researchers concluded that the people who took vitamins did not live longer or have fewer cases of heart disease or cancer than people who did not take them. So you're thinking, okay, oh wow, I'm gonna take supplements and you know, cause I'm gonna be healthier than you are. Well, you know what? <laughs> These researchers concluded people who took vitamins did not live longer or have fewer cases of heart disease or cancer than people who did not take them. 
save your effing money. Why am I so effing tired, Gwyneth Paltrow? Because people keep ripping me off. That's why I'm so effing tired. Um, so save your money. There's no health benefit to this stuff other than the placebo effect that you seem to think there is. Another long-term study in the Journal of Amer American Medical Association, I'm getting excited, so I gotta calm the F down. Uh, in May, divided nearly 6,000 men into groups and gave them either a placebo or one of four supplements touted for their brain-protecting abilities. The result? No decreased prevalence of dementia among any of the supplement-taking groups. So now you've got all these uh, supplements like ginkgo and all this. Oh, they're going to enhance, enhance your cognitive ability. They're going to keep you mentally sharp. No, they're not. You know, they're just going to make your wallet lighter. So again... A lie can go around the world faster than the truth can even strap up a shoes. Remember that when it comes to this stuff, all right? So very, very, very important stuff. Study after study has also found that many popular supplements can cause harm. A large, I'm going to just, uh, I think I'll highlight that too. What do you think, folks? Oh, I can't. Okay. Uh, a large long-term study of male smokers found that those who regularly took vitamin A were more likely to get lung cancer than those who didn't. All right, more likely to get cancer taking vitamins than those who don't. And remember, vitamin A is a fat soluble vitamin. So even if you're taking a multivitamin, that can build up in your system over time and become something that can contribute to cancer, can be carcinogenic, not prevent you from cancer. So treatment with beta carotene, vitamin A, vitamin E can increase mortality. All right, increase mortality. So there you go. Um, taking these supplements, they aren't making you more health beneficial, all right? They actually can contribute to an earlier death. Oh, okay, I can't, I can't get that on there. So, and this was something Dr. Herbert pointed out way back in the 80s and 90s and 2000s, and he just happened to be right. Um, so, uh, risks aside, research has suggested um, that our bodies are better equipped to process vitamins and minerals in whole foods. Whole foods, imagine that. Um, than those in pills. When we bite into a juicy peach or crunchy Brussels sprouts, we're ingesting dozens of nutrients, some that haven't even been identified yet, and hundreds of phytochemicals like isothiocyanates as well as carotenoids and things like that. So we're just scratching the surface, but we now know that supplements, um, taking an exogenous form of something isn't the same as eating it in a whole food. Um, so what's the conclusion there? Mother Nature knows her business. Mother Nature knows what she's doing, folks. You don't have to second guess her, okay? We need to stop all this. Um, your body isn't smart enough, okay? We need, you know, we need all these people who sit in the library to come up with formulas to sell you because your body's just not getting it. Why are you so effing tired? Probably because of the lifestyle you live and the way you let stress control you. You're not going to swallow a pill to do anything about that. So uh, let's get real about getting real. Austin said that's why nutritionists recommend people get their foods from uh, whole foods, not things that have been packaged and put in a box. Virtually any registered dietitian, physician, or public health expert is likely to reiterate the advice health professionals have been giving for decades. Eat food like fruits and vegetables in moderation. Stay away from processed food and sugary uh, beverages. Or in the words of journalist uh, Michael Pollan, eat food, not a lot, mostly plants. I wrote a whole chapter on that in my book. Uh, I think it was The Anti-Diet Approach. I've written several chapters breaking down his seven words. Eat food, not a lot, mostly plants. In my book, I talked about eat food. What does that really mean? What is real food? Not a lot. What does that mean? How does it relate to tolerable hunger? Mostly plants. What does that look like in a diet? So I've written extensively about that. Now people ask, where's the FDA regulation? Well, after spending uh, the last few months of her pregnancy and the first few weeks of her new baby's life in isolation, Yamshidi's patient was able to go home and be with her family and Yamshidi said the experience changed the way he thought about supplements for good. I feel negatively about them, and I didn't feel this way going into it. Ask Stephen Tate, the director of the Office of Dietary Supplement Programs at the FDA, why the agency isn't stopping more similar situations, and he gave a simpler answer. We're doing the best we can. They're just outnumbered, folks. Um, in 1994, Congress passed a controversial law called the Dietary Supplement Health and Education Act. That was a political leaning. 
uh, Doc, um, Senator Orrin Hatch made a fortune on, on being the sort of uh, go-to person uh, for this act to pass. He lined his pockets and got rich um, over having no regulation uh, in the health and supplement food industry, including the fitness industry, especially the uh, fitness industry. I was around in this time. This is when I was writing for the magazines and stuff. And the magazines were going crazy, putting out ads of make sure you vote, you know, vote to pass this legislation. We can't have them, uh, you know, we can't have them um, regulating our supplements because they don't understand and all this stuff. No, it's because these people knew that uh, revenue from ads for supplements that didn't do anything were how their magazines stayed afloat. So they had a vested interest in this passing. It had nothing to do with supplements being any good. So um, let's look at the difference now. Before a new drug can be sold, the company making it has to apply for FDA approval and the agency has to conclude that the drug is safe and does what it claims to do. So if the drug says it's used to treat cancer, then the agency's reviewers are going to look at that and make a determination that there's evidence that it does indeed treat cancer. However, because of the Diet Health and Education Act uh, 1994, supplements don't face any burden of proof. The agency can review products that add new dietary ingredients when it gets a notification, but it doesn't have the authority to stop anything from going to market. So Gwyneth Paltrow's goop can go on and, and make all kinds of claims that why are you so effing tired and, and we can solve that. Oh, go back to your high school genes. We can solve that. They don't have to prove it. They just have to say that this ingredient does this and this ingredient does that and that's in our product. So um, problem solved. Well, no, um, but there's no burden of proof and that's it, that's a big deal. So. Um, when the DSHEA uh, was passed, the bill made sense because in 1994, there was about 600 supplement companies producing about 4,000 products for a total revenue of about $4 billion. But that market has since increased and ballooned. Today, close to 6,000 companies pump out about 75,000 products. So where there's no regulation, folks, you just invite white-collar crime. So if you go in there and you know you're not going to go to jail for making claims, Dr. Atkins never went to jail. These people aren't going to go to jail. If anything, they get shut down for a little while um, and they're going to get a slap on the hand. So there's nothing where there's no regulation. You invite white collar crime. When you invite white collar crime, then you're going to get a lot of promises and a lot of consumer ripoffs. But what bugs me in the fitness industry is how willing you, the consumer, are to buy into it. And for a while there, for a number of years, I stopped having sympathy for people in the industry. Like I said, um, when I did that uh, keto quote card a couple of weeks ago, you see the nature of the consumer. When I did that, uh, there's something fishy about fish oils article, which had me way ahead of the research uh, saying there's no point in taking fish oils. The blowback I got trying to help the consumer and protect them. Um, it's amazing to me how much you, the consumer, want to buy in the magic and want to believe in magic. So uh, to continue the article, I went off on a rant there, as I'm known to do. Uh, removing a supplement from store shelves comes down to documented emergency room visits and calls to poison control centers. That's the only regulation they have over supplement companies. Only when a supplement is reported to be unsafe uh, as a result of one of these adverse events, as the FDA calls them, is the agency compelled to act. Otherwise, their hands are tied. P people like uh, Gwyneth Paltrow can, and their manufacturers can continue to say whatever they want to say. Um, most of the time, we don't know a product is on the market until we see something bad about it from an adverse event report. So again, a lie can go around the world before the truth even straps on his shoes. It's a reactive um, agency now because its hands are tied with that DHSEA Act. It's a very different regimen from when we know everything is out there and we know what's in it. Uh, we don't want to be reactive. We want to be proactive, but we can't. So there's no one, folks, imagine in, in your own community. If there's no one policing the community, why would the community continue to act in an honest way? It doesn't make any sense when there's money to be made. So consumers have no way to know. Most unsafe supplements have been found to contain ingredients that aren't listed on their labels. I told you all about spiking new, um, new products in the fitness industry to make a name for yourself. That's what you do. You spike it with cheap to get from China uh, ingredients, either stimulants or oral, oral testosterone. Imagine a woman going out there 
you know, uh, buying some new brand of creatine because it's cheap and not realizing she's ingesting uh, methyl testosterone uh, and then wonders why, you know, she's growing hair and things like that. So um, remember, pharmaceutical drugs, some of which have been banned by the FDA. A study of product recalls published in 2013, Journal of a Medical uh, American Association found that of the 274 supplements recalled by the FDA between 2009 and 2012, all of them contain banned drugs. So uh, let me just, a 2014 report found that more than two thirds of the supplements purchased six months after being recalled still contain the banned drugs. Why? Because they know they can't go to jail. So, oh, we got caught. Oh, well, back to business. The products we see today have gone way beyond that sort of core group that they were in 1994. Now they're promoted for all sorts of things. Some are long-term, some are short-term, some are chemicals no one's ever seen before. It's a much different universe than it was at the time. Now they're spiking new uh, products with things pro that I'm not even aware of because there's new chemicals uh, all the time, right? That's how athletes beat drug tests. So, And now this, here's some important stuff here. Austin says three categories of supplements are the most lawless of the industry. Physical enhancement, weight loss, and sexual performance. That is important stuff. So let me just copy that and put it in the notes. I hope you're hitting your share button for this, folks. And I hope this is hitting the spot I'm intending it to hit. Of the three categories of supplements that are the most lawless of this industry, the supplement industry, physical enhancement, weight loss, and sexual performance. Physical enhancement, all these GH boosters and testosterone boosters and other nonsense, complete and utter nonsense. All this, your protein that comes in a canister is top of the line protein as if it's somehow better than real food. Nonsense. All these weight loss, fat burning products, most lawless of the industry. And these are people who do nothing but study this. So when you're next time you rely on anecdotal evidence from some figure competitor that her fat burner really worked. No, it's probably the eight weeks on the starvation diet you were on that probably really worked. And the fat burner had no effect at all except in your head. You need to start doing the math, folks. And I can't do it for everybody because I just become a target like everybody else because how dare I speak against the industry that I thrive in? Well, I don't thrive in selling bogus bullcrap to people. So here we go. Some of these uh, companies won't identify ingredients that they purposefully put in their products. Like I said, I know that firsthand. Some weight loss drugs, for example, that have been pulled off the market, we can still find these in the bottles even though they don't put it on the label. Amen to that. Uh, Tave's 26-person team, the only government employees looking into these issues, didn't even have a dedicated office until about a year and a half ago. So we're swarming in white-collar crime in the supplement industry, folks, and it's about time you knew that and learned that. So uh, we're pretty sure we're not aware of everything that's out there, but we do what we can, and all we can do now is enforce the law. But dangerous supplements continue to sweep through the cracks. In 2016, the world's largest supplement maker, GNC Holdings, agreed to pay $2.25 million to avoid federal prosecution over allegations that it sold performance-enhancing supplements that claimed to increase speed, strength, and endurance with an active ingredient called DMAA. Only problem there, two soldiers who use the supplement died in 2011, which prompted the Defense Department to remove all these products containing DMMA from stores on military bases. Now, GNC has been to court several times, folks, and they just pay the fines because, like I said, no one's going to go to jail in the health food industry, and they can claim plausible deniability to anything that's in their products because they're not present at the factories manufacturing them, all right? And they just consider this a speeding ticket. Really, it's just the cost of doing business. $2.2 million fine when you're making $500 million isn't really all that much. So, um, again, you think these people are on your side, that they're out to manufacture products that are going to help you with your physical goals? They're out there to make money. A recent indictment against USP Labs, the Texas-based company that made the supplement, accused it of falsely claiming the product was made of natural plant extracts when it really contains synthetic stimulants made in China. How many times have I just said that? 
This was a popular, popular, popular way to do business when I was in that world. You ordered because you can do that. You can do this online right now, folks. You can, after you get off with me, you can go online, Google searches and start going on fitness websites on, on how to get uh, certain drugs in powder form from China shipped right to your door. So this isn't unusual. Uh, natural plant extracts on the label, inside the bottle, synthetic stimulants made in China, which can cause heart arrhythmias, heart attack, uh, adrenal issues, things like that. And the problems are ongoing. Earlier this year, the FDA recalled several uh, supplement companies, several after they were found to contain unapproved new drugs, and two more were recalled after they were found to contain unlisted anabolic steroids. So uh, there we go. Um, and that was common practice in my day, you know, and I knew about it. I wasn't party to it, but I knew about it. I would shake my head in disgust. I'm going to post that up there because it's important. All right, and this is how you got a product, not just to market, but you got it attention in a competing market. Order your oral cheap uh, methyl testosterone from China, send it to the company that makes your products, call it a proprietary blend, get it into people, it'll work because it's a steroid, an oral steroid, which means it's bitchy on the liver for sure. And then now you've got product attention because people are going online going, wow, I tried bullcrap product X, did it ever work? And you only need to put enough steroid in the first few batches to get consumers to start talking about it word of mouth because anecdotal evidence is everything. And then you take out the illicit uh, drug before anybody can test it and then your hands are clean. So it's a big, bad, white collar crime world full of dirty people, folks. Testosterone boosters, all the rest of this stuff. Um, on August 11th, days before the art, this particular article was published, the FDA recalled another batch of supplements, this time manufactured by a company called Pharmatech because of possible contamination with bacteria that can cause serious respiratory infections. Consumers have no way to know what's in the label and what's actually in the box or bottle. There's many dubious com companies out there that are willing to take a risk with consumer health and their lives. And remember, the number one thing it said of the three, um, you know, that, that are the most offensive, I can't find it right now, but is weight loss and physical enhancement. So very, very important uh, for you to know the difference and learn the difference um, you know, and uh, get understanding all this. So I'm going to go back. Sorry, I, I missed the comments, folks. I get on a roll. Um, yeah, Tony's just saying in 1999, a supplement called Triac. I remember this in Muscle Media 2000 was the miracle fat burner, and it was a thyroid medication, and then actually pulled off uh, the shelf. And then James is saying. Uh, and James, I know, is also an academic, and he's saying large amounts of antioxidants actually become pro-oxidants in the smoker studies. 98 to 99 percent of the fish oil is inert, and bacteria are dead before they are put in the cap or bottle. If they're put in there at all, it becomes closer to 100 percent by the time they reach the shelves, which can take months. So uh, there you go. Um, more and more people. Now, these are, you guys don't know these people, but I know them from uh, checking into my stuff. Um, you know, James that made that comment, uh, he's an academic and he's a, he's a medical professional as well. So, um, you know, um, yeah, you could boost broccoli sales by bagging it and calling it Turbo Green. And just, uh, you know, like Michael Pollan said, the silence of the yams. Michael Pollan's point was real food doesn't need a label to advertise that it's real food. You'll find it in the produce section and you don't find, you know, red delicious apple and under it you don't see five different ingredients, right? You just know he calls that the silence of the yams and I love that. I've read studies, uh, Andy's just saying, where people artif artificial deficient, people have created artificial deficiencies by mega dosing water soluble vitamins. Yep. I mean, I mean, that's the Gwyneth Paltrow argument, right? Oh, we've got doctors and then, you know, the modern nutritional deficiencies are these. When the fact shows there are no modern nutritional deficiencies and you do worse by putting crap, putting this stuff into your body. So the example I used to make all the time, folks, about vitamins and minerals because people don't understand about retention and absorption and competition for absorption and, and how uh, nutrients are metabolized. I used to say, if I took a writing class with Stephen King, and the thing he emphasized the most was punctuation and the importance of vowels, 
then I don't go home and start writing a book and just start throwing vowels in everywhere because it's important and exclamation points and periods and commas because Stephen King said it's important, right? There's rules to all this on where and how and when it works. It's the same thing with vitamins and minerals. It's not so much, oh, vitamin C does all these good things. We should probably take more of it. No, our body works in a very, very delicate and wise checks and balances system. So um please just ask me if i heard of ip6 gold i no i don't follow nonsense clee i mean i don't people start doing that when i do these kind of presentations well what about this supplement what about that supplement it's all nonsense folks i don't know how else to like present this to you there are no exceptions it's junk um you know this is a this is a respected uh you know investigative journalist if there were exceptions that would have been on there like that column on the left i showed you in the chart under don't take and do maybe take, um, you know, that's all the conclusions you, you can. Um, can I talk about uh, some of the naturopathic doctors that are using vitamin um, IVs as immune boosters? Non yeah, I can talk about it, but it's nonsense, Tracy. I mean, it just, and so it goes, right? I mean, there's the Bernstein Diet Clinic here in Canada, not, not to be confused with some other Bernstein in the States who apparently uh, does good work. Um, and he has medically supervised diets and you go in and you get a B12 injection uh, once a week because that's supposed to add some, you know, medical superiority to it all. You know what the B12 shot is for, folks? The calories are so low on that diet that for anyone who can actually sustain it, which they deserve a medal if you can because it's like 500 to 800 calories. It's just ridiculous. Well, the B12 is to offset the anemia that will likely ensue so they can't be sued. So that's it's just to protect their own ass. And yet they market it as something completely different. So, um, you know, I just can't keep doing all this for you guys. I mean, I, I like to, but um, what's my position on nutrients on vitamin D? I guess you came in late, Rhonda, because I already talked about that. Um, many folks deficient in D and it's important. Uh, many folks aren't deficient in D. That's the marketing hype. Um, the most recent study showed vitamin D toxicity more and more happening more and more often. So, um, you know, I'm a minimalist. Um, unless someone proves to me in a blood test I need it, then uh, I'm not taking it. So um, I shared the link. Uh, Hashmet, uh, please share the link for these research. I, I shared the link at the beginning. Go back and rewatch this and then click on this article and then you can find all these people yourselves. Again, folks, I get kind of offended when people want me to do their research for them. Um, you know, I present you the article and just do what I do, you know, backtrack, you know, <laughs> follow the links and then you'll find um, you'll find where, where they should be. So uh, very, very important stuff. And hopefully you guys were hitting your shared button um, and we can uh, get that going. So um I don't know who Steve Randon is, Perry, uh, injectable HA, injectable, I don't even know H H A what, I'm not sure. Um, and yeah, just further to my uh, lecture, like vitamins were discovered because there was so much malnutrition in the 20s and 30s. Don't forget, there was no microwaves. Refrigeration was kind of new and only rich people had it. There was no, you know, um, ovens and, and preservatives in food. So there was really malnutrition and a lot of nutritional problems. That's why the vitamin discovery was so important. We don't have malnutrition in a modern area, like Andy's saying, like how many kids get rickets in North America these days? So, you know, this is how something changes. So, um, no, I don't know anything. I'm, I'm not going to follow anything about hyaluronic acid. It just, you know, anything that these people can narrow down and minimalize and say, it does this in the body. Therefore we should take it as a supplement like HA. It's just the same marketing bullshit. So, um, yeah. So anyway, I think, um, I've ranted and raved enough this week, an important, uh, journalist article. I hope you guys, uh, you know, found it, uh, relatively beneficial. And, um, again, um, you know, I can only do so much each week, but I mean, we really, really, really start to, uh, you know, we really need to get over this notion that somehow I'm the special case who needs vitamins and we need to stop listening to celebrity endorsements. Gwyneth Paltrow is not a nutritionist or a dietitian. last time I looked, but you use the face of celebrity because there's someone we trust. All right. And it's amazing that when I'm out there, um, you know, 
trying to help you, the consumer, and educate you, the consumer, I'm the one who's attacked. Like a couple, like that quote card on keto diet. I mean, some of those uh, comments were beyond ridiculous. So, uh, again, um, hopefully you guys are hitting the share button and you're tuning in. You know, I, I do all this research. I already know it for myself and my clients. I mean, I don't need to be on here live doing this, um, you know, for, for my own health. I already know this stuff. I haven't taken a vitamin in three decades. So uh, this is all for you guys. So I hope it helps, and I hope you'll spread the word. And for the yeah butts out there, get them to listen to this in its entirety because um, there's always going to be the yeah butts, okay? So, uh, yes, it is Sunday fun day for me. Apple fritters and powdered donuts and a quart of milk I had for breakfast, but I think it's time for my next meal because I ranted so much. I'm feeling a little bit peckish. So I'm off for this week, folks. Uh, hopefully you benefited from this. Um, and I'll, always, uh, once I get going, hit your share button. Hit the emoticons. Apparently Facebook likes that. Um, get talking out there. And, of course, I do repost these to my YouTube channel as well. Um, so hopefully you're learning that the stuff you need to know you're not going to get exposed to by following fitness industry and diet industry stuff. They're not going to expose you to this stuff. They're going to keep it from you as best as they can, just like I explained in last week's lecture of um, the most important and relevant nutritionist of our time being someone you've never heard of because the fitness and diet and supplement industry can't afford to have you hear about him. So that's it, folks. Vitamins and supplements you're taking that you think improve your health, Think again. That was the title of this lecture. I hope you benefited from it. And by all means, uh, continue to hit the share button and uh, watch out for scammers out there, folks, um, because it's really bad. And I'm just a spit in the wind when it comes to trying to uh, educate you on the truth. The truth has no sizzle. The truth isn't sexy. You know, uh, unlike goop formulators, you know, everything that the modern woman needs Everything a modern woman needs, folks, comes from right here, all right? And when you start equating to an inside-out lifestyle for your health and well-being, then you've got the ticket, all right? So that's it for me this week, folks, and um, I will uh, see you guys uh, next week, hopefully. Uh, spread the word, and uh, we'll call this the place of truth. See you next time.